All right, let's uncork the world of Portuguese wines. We're diving deep into Vinhos de Portugal, right? Trying to understand what makes these wines so special. It's a fascinating journey, that's for sure. I mean, we're talking about a, a winemaking tradition that goes back, well, thousands of years. Thousands. It's wild to think that, like, the Phoenicians, those ancient traders, they might have been the first to bring grapevines to the Iberian Peninsula, what, over 4,000 years ago? It's incredible, isn't it? And then, of course, the Romans, they really saw the potential of the land for winemaking. Oh, absolutely. They weren't just casual drinkers. They established those large-scale vineyards, mm -hmm. really laid the groundwork for for what would become, you know, a cornerstone of Portuguese culture. Yeah, it's like they set the stage for everything that came after. Exactly. And it gets even more interesting in the Middle Ages when the church got seriously into winemaking. Right. And not just for communion. Ha uh ha. -huh. They needed a lot of it. Uh -huh. exactly. It's like those monasteries became like early wineries, experimenting with different grapes and techniques, passing down that knowledge. They were the original wine influencers. I love that. Wine influencers. Right. It's true. They had the land, the expertise, the demand, all the ingredients for some serious quality wine production. They were way ahead of their time. But then, of course, you have the age of exploration. Those Portuguese explorers, they weren't just bringing back exotic spices, right? They were introducing the world to their wines. They were like floating ambassadors for Portuguese wines. Exactly. Opening up those trade routes and, and people's palates, you know, across the globe. It's amazing how influential they were. But Vinos de Portugal, you know, it doesn't shy away from the tough times either. Like the phylloxera epidemic in the 19th century, that must have been devastating for the industry. Absolutely. It's a harsh reminder that winemaking, even with all its romance, it's still agriculture at its core. And that tiny insect, phylloxera, wiped out vineyards all over Europe. And for Portugal, well, it meant adapting, replanting, and really focusing on those resilient grape varieties. A real reset button for the industry. Exactly. So how did Portuguese wine bounce back from that? What makes it so special today? Well, it all boils down to terroir. Think of it like this. It's the personality of a place expressed mm -hmm. through its wine. It's the soil, the climate, the altitude, the sunlight, even how close it is to the ocean. And Portugal... It's got this amazing range of microclimates. Like a whole world of flavors packed into one country. Exactly. You've got the Duver Valley, right? All, all those steep terraced vineyards famous for those robust reds and, well, port, of course. It sure is. And then you have Vinho Verde, which is, well, it's a completely different story. Cooler, Atlantic coast, those crisp white wines. It's amazing how two totally different wine worlds can exist in the same country. It's incredible, isn't it? And what I find fascinating is how Vinhos of Portugal really breaks down each element of terroir. Like take sunlight, for example. It's not just about sunny days, right? It's about how that sunlight interacts with the grapes themselves. You're exactly right. The angle of the sun, how intense it is, how long those grapes are exposed to it, mm -hmm. it all affects the sugar levels. And that ultimately determines the alcohol content and the final, well, the final taste of the wine. It's like the sun is literally infusing those grapes with flavor. It's a great way to put it. So we've got sunshine. Now, what about rain? I mean, you need that for the vines to grow, right? You definitely need rain. But, and this is important, timing is everything. Too much rain, especially close to harvest time, it can dilute the grapes. You lose that balance of sugar and acidity. And those are, well, they're essential for a quality wine. So it's a delicate dance between all these elements. It really is. And in Portugal, you see that dance play out beautifully. You have the sunshine, the rain, the influence of the Atlantic. They all come together to create something unique. And speaking of unique, this book, it doesn't just talk about the usual suspects, you know, Port and Vinho Verde. There's so much more to discover. Oh, there's a whole world of hidden gems in Portuguese wine. So let's uncork some of those hidden gems, shall we? Let's dive into the specific regions and see what we find. Okay, so Venus de Portugal takes us beyond just talking about the wines, right? It's like we're on a guided tour through all these different regions. It really is like a tour, and each region has its own fascinating story. It's incredible. So let's start with an iconic one, Douro. I mean, those terraced vineyards clinging to the hillsides along the Douro River, just breathtaking. Breathtaking is an understatement. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site for a reason. Not just visually stunning, but so historically significant, too. Yeah. You know, it's the birthplace of port wine. The OG of Portuguese wine regions. But the Douro isn't just about port, right? What else makes it so special? 
Well, you've got to think about the conditions there, those steep slopes. The vines really have to struggle. Really? Oh, yeah. They're digging deep into that schist soil, soaking up all the minerals. And that struggle, it translates directly into the grapes. You get these incredibly intense, concentrated flavors. So the harsher the conditions, the more character the wine has. You got it. It's like a metaphor for life. Right. But then, on top of that, you factor in the Douro's climate. Hot, dry summers. But then the influence of the Atlantic Ocean kind of moderates things. Keeps it from getting too extreme. Exactly. And that balance, it's what creates the perfect environment for those classic Douro reds. So we're talking like Tariga Nacional. Yes. Tariga Nacional, Tinta Roris, Tinta Barroca. These grapes, they produce wines with amazing depth structure. You get those dark fruit flavors, spice, this lovely minerality from the soil. I can almost taste it now. It's like you're tasting the landscape in every sip. Exactly. Okay, so from the rugged Duro, let's transport ourselves to a completely different scene, Vigno Verde. Even the name, it just evokes this feeling of, I don't know, freshness, lightness. Vigno Verde, literally green wine. It's all okay. about youthfulness, vibrancy. Mm -hmm. Meant to be enjoyed young. But it's not actually green, right? What makes it green? Good point. Most <laughs> Vino Verde wines are white or rosé, although you do find some reds. Mm -hmm. And that green refers more to, like you said, that youthful character, that slight spritz, the vibrant acidity. They're light, crisp, bursting with aromas of citrus, green apple, maybe a hint of floral notes. Sounds refreshing. It is. The perfect wine for a warm day, especially paired with seafood. I can imagine. Okay, so we've explored the north. Let's head south to Alenteo. This region is often called the breadbasket of Portugal, right? That's right. Alenteo is known for its rolling plains, those iconic cork oak trees. And the climate there, it's more continental, hot days, but then you get those cool nights. So how does that impact the wines? What can we expect from this region? Alenteo is pretty diverse when it comes to its wines, but they tend to be more full-bodied. They've got this richness, this warmth that reflects the climate. Yeah, makes sense. You'll find some really robust reds there. They use grapes like Aragonez, Trincadera, Alicante Boucher. You get those ripe berry flavors, plums, a touch of spice. Sounds delicious. But Alenteo isn't just a red wine region, is it? No way. They make some lovely white wines, too, often blends of Arinto, Antalm Vaz, Rupero. And these grapes, they love the Alenteo sunshine. You get wines that range from crisp and citrusy to richer, more aromatic styles. It's amazing how each region has its own personality, its own style. It really is. Okay, we still got more ground to cover. Let's talk about Dom. Ah, Dom. This region is often called the Burgundy of Portugal. Wow, that's a pretty bold comparison. Why Burgundy? What makes it similar? It's all about elegance finesse. Dom is known for producing wines, particularly reds, that are incredibly balanced, complex. They've got amazing aging potential. Okay, so we're talking about wines that can age for a long time. Exactly. And the reason they can age so well comes down to the region itself. Dom has these granite soils, and it's nestled between these two mountain ranges. So it creates this really unique microclimate. So the geography is doing a lot of the work here. It really is. And the great varieties they grow there, like Tariga Nacional and Tinta Ruiz, they thrive in this environment. But in Dalm, they express themselves with this, this restrained elegance. So it's a different side of Tariga Nacional than we might see in the Douro. Precisely. It's still Tariga Nacional, but it's showing its more, well, its more sophisticated side, perhaps. The Dom Reds, they can have structure, but they're often more nuanced with this lovely acidity and a distinct minerality. Okay, I'm intrigued. So what kind of flavors are we talking about here? Like red fruit flavors like yeah. cherry, raspberry. Often you get these herbal notes, a peppery finish. These are wines that really reward patience, you know. They develop this beautiful complexity over time. They're like the fine wines of Portugal then. You could say that. They have a certain elegance. Now, we've talked about the reds, but what about white wines from Dom? Are they worth seeking out? Absolutely. The white wines from Dom are a bit of a hidden gem. The star grape there is Incruzado. It makes wines that are both aromatic and age-worthy. I haven't heard of that grape before. What's it like? Imagine, like, citrus, floral notes, maybe a hint of hazelnut. And all of that is underpinned by this beautiful minerality that comes from those granite soils. Okay, I'm adding Dom to my list of regions to explore. This is fascinating. But before we move on, we've got to talk about the Portuguese wine classification system. It can seem a little complicated, but it's actually quite helpful once you understand it. Vinhos de Portugal does a great job of breaking it down. It does. 
And it's so important for consumers to understand. So you've got the DOCs, right? The Nomination de Origem Controlada. They're kind of like the French AOCs, right? Exactly. Wines from very specific regions with very strict rules. They dictate the grape varieties, how the grapes are grown, how the wines are made. So it's a guarantee of quality and authenticity. Exactly. It's a way of protecting the traditions and reputation of a region. And then you have the IGPs. Indicação Geográfica Protegida. Right. And those are a little broader than the DOCs. They allow for more flexibility with the grape varieties and winemaking styles. But still tied to a specific region. Yes, exactly. Think of them as a step above table wines, but with a clear connection to a particular place. It's like a roadmap, you know? Mm. Helps you navigate the world of Portuguese wine. Precisely. And Vinhos to Portugal doesn't just focus on the wines themselves. It also talks about the people who shaped the industry. The pioneers, the innovators. Like the legendary Marquesa Pombal, right? Yeah. The man who created the very first appellation system in the world. In the 18th century, he was a visionary. He was way ahead of his time. He recognized the importance of terroir, of defining where these wines were coming from, making sure they were high quality. And that system he created, it laid the groundwork for the wine classifications we have today, not just in Portugal, but in many parts of the world. That's amazing. Speaking of tradition, Vinhas de Portugal delves into some of the more traditional wine-making techniques that are still used today. Some of them are ancient. Like vinificação natala, fermenting wine in those giant clay pots. Yes, it's a method that goes back to the Romans. Imagine these enormous vessels, some of them holding over a thousand liters of wine. It's like stepping back in time. What kind of impact does using those clay pots have on the wine? Well, the clay is porous, so it allows the wine to breathe during fermentation. You end up with this really unique flavor profile. The wines kind of have this, this earthy, rustic character. It's like tasting history in every glass. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked about clay pots. Now, what about estufagem? That's a word I haven't heard before. Estufagem is the process that's used to make Madeira wine. You know, that fortified wine that's famous for its complexity and its ability to age for decades. I've always been curious about Madeira. It seems kind of mysterious. It is a fascinating wine. And estufagem plays a big role in that. It involves heating the wine to high temperatures for a long period. It actually mimics the aging process that used to happen on those long sea voyages. So it's like they're recreating history in a bottle. In a way, yes. It's a great example of how winemakers are adapting and innovating, but also respecting those old traditions. It's remarkable. I mean, it's incredible how much history and tradition are packed into every bottle of Portuguese wine. It really is. There's a story in every glass. And speaking of stories, all this talk about wine is making me hungry. What about food pairings? Vinhos de Portugal has got us covered. It has a whole section dedicated to pairing these amazing wines with delicious Portuguese food. Let's dive in. I'm ready to uncork some deliciousness. All right, let's talk food. Vinhos de Portugal does not disappoint when it comes to pairing these wines with food. No, it really doesn't. And Portuguese cuisine, I mean, it's just incredible. So much diversity. I know. It's like they have it all. Fresh seafood, those hearty stews, grilled meats, amazing cheese. It's a dream for wine pairing. It really is a playground for anyone who loves food and wine. So where should we start? Mm. So many options. Okay, let's start with a classic. We are talking about those robust Douro Reds, like a powerful Tariga Nacional. What pairs well with those? Oh, you got to go with grilled meats. A classic pairing for a reason. Imagine a juicy steak seasoned simply with just some salt and pepper. Perfect. Or maybe some grilled lamb chops. The tannins in those Douro Reds, they cut through the richness of the meat so well. Cuts the fat. Exactly. And you get those smoky, savory notes from the grill that just complement the wine beautifully. It's like they were made for each other. Okay, that's Douro Reds. What about Vino Verde? We were talking about how light and fresh those wines are, that vibrant acidity. Vino Verde is made for seafood. It's a match made in heaven. Okay, I can see it. What kind of seafood? Oh, picture this. A sunny patio overlooking the ocean. You've got a glass of chilled Vino Verde in your hand. Sounds perfect already. And you're pairing that with some fresh grilled sardines. That bright acidity in the Vino Verde is like a squeeze of lemon. It cuts through any richness and just makes the flavors of the fish really sing. Okay, you're speaking my language. Now we can't forget about those heartier dishes that Portugal is known for. You know, like those rich stews, the braised meats. Oh, absolutely. And that's where wines from Dome come in. Remember we were talking about how elegant and balanced they are? Yes. Those reds, especially with those earthy notes, that touch of spice. They pair so well with those richer dishes. Okay, so what are we thinking? 
cocido a portuguesa. You know, that traditional Portuguese stew with all the different meats and sausages. Oh, that's so good. Or maybe a flavorful feijoada. It's a hearty bean stew. And those dome reds, they have enough structure to stand up to the richness of those dishes. But they're not so heavy that they overpower the other flavors. It's all about balance, right? Finding that harmony between the wine and the food. Exactly. Now, we've covered meat, seafood, stews. We can't forget about cheese. Portugal has some amazing cheese. The cheese, so good. Tell me about some winning wine and cheese pairings. What should we be looking for? You can't go wrong with a classic. A sharp aged cheese like a Serra da Estrela or a Coijo da Ilha paired with a glass of port. Port and cheese, classic for a reason. It is. The sweetness of the port goes so well with the tanginess of those cheeses. It's a must try pairing. Any other maybe more unexpected cheese and wine combinations we should know about? Vinhos de Portugal actually suggests trying a dry white port with cheese. They have this interesting, nutty, slightly oxidative character that can work really well with certain cheeses, especially those with savory or nutty notes themselves. Wow, I never would have thought to pair white port with cheese. I love that. I mean, that's what's so fun about exploring wine pairings. It's all about being adventurous, trying new things, and discovering those moments where a pairing just clicks. Exactly. It can completely change how you experience both the food and the wine. Totally. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of Portuguese wines, what are some key takeaways you hope our listeners will remember from this journey? Hmm. Well, I think the biggest one is this. Portuguese wines have something for everyone. From the Douro Valley with those bold reds to Vinho Verde with those light, refreshing whites, each region has its own unique personality, its own style. And don't be afraid to explore Try new grapes, try new regions, talk to the experts at your local wine shop. There's a whole world of Portuguese wine out there waiting to be discovered. I love that. Be adventurous, ask questions, and most importantly, enjoy the journey. Well, there you have it, our deep dive into the captivating world of Portuguese wines. We explored the history, the terroirs, those incredible grapes, those diverse regions, even talked about pairing them with delicious Portuguese food. We covered a lot of ground. We did, but remember, this is just the beginning. Now it's your turn to go out there and discover the magic of Portuguese wines for yourself. Cheers to that.